Hello Gourd friends, it's been a while since I posted a video, but I'm working on a piece today that I think you might be interested in. And the technique that I'm using is negative burning. If you don't know what that is, then stay tuned. So very briefly, um, working negatively is not something new and it's not something that is exclusive to burning. Um, as a um, as drawing that is frequently used and I just wanted to give you an example of what that means. So here's just a photo of a tree and I just want to show you where the negative spaces are. So instead of drawing the actual tree, you would be drawing in the spaces between and around each of the branches. Sometimes this is really helpful when you can't really see or really make sense of where things are, um, sometimes in perspective or um, in certain, whoops, in um, certain figures. Sometimes it's easier to draw in where, whoops, where that negative space is. So this would be all the negative space We'll just kind of color that in so you can see. Sorry, this is really sloppy because I'm using my finger. I don't have a, a proper drawing tablet, so this is will have to do, but I think you get the idea. So let me switch over to my gourd and I will show you how that translates to burning. Okay, so as you can see by this one that I have already completed, that the um, all of the burning is done around the jellyfish. I don't have it outlined. It is all done in shading, but sometimes, and this is one of those cases, that the areas that you don't burn are just as important as the areas that you do. So let's get started on this one right here. And I already have my jellyfish penciled in. and I'm just going to burn around the jellyfish. As I'm working, I'm also putting in some little bubbles or what appears to look like little bubbles. Um, I like to do that with my underwater burnings. It just adds a little bit more interest. So in a sense, the bubbles are also negative burning as well because the bubbles are formed by burning around each little circle. And I try to vary them as I go along. Sometimes I take some out if I don't like how it looks. When it comes to shading, this is something that you really need to be thinking about and making a design choice before you even begin. When I decided on working on this jellyfish, I did have several ideas of how I wanted to approach it. One of them was really just outlining the jellyfish and the tentacles were going to be burned as just long strands. And as I thought about it, I thought I had wanted to add more interest in the background. And if I wanted the background to be a little bit darker, I knew the tentacles would get lost. So I opted for having a darker background and light colored tentacles. So that requires me to burn around each tentacle instead of um, instead of burning the tentacles in and having the background be very light in order to see it. So even though this type of burning might take a little more time, in the end, I think it looks a lot better. Put a nice big bubble right there.
And there are so many ways that you can use this technique. And like I said before, it's not limited to burning, but it's very useful in burning. And I think in drawing, that's when I first learned about working in the negative space and just doing a complete piece only working into the negative spaces. Let me work down here a little bit. Here's a real tiny spot right there. Let me get that darkened in. So here's the first tentacle. This one kind of goes out of the border. But you can use this for burning in grasses. Um, whiskers. There's all kinds of applications for this. Tree branches. Anything where you have something light that you want to stand out against a dark background. Um, you might have already been doing this and didn't really know what it was called. That can be somewhat intuitive, but um, as a design choice, if you're aware of it as being a technique and a choice that you can make, it might help you in future work to decide to do this before you even begin. And that will help you make some decisions on what you want your designs to be, how you want your compositions to flow, how you want your values to be as far as the, the background and the foreground, what you want to push and what you what you don't. It is helpful to have a little bit of a pencil sketch in beforehand. That way you know exactly where your negative spaces are. Now I do this technique um, in some grasses on my rabbit course that's available on Teachable. If you haven't seen that yet, you can go check that out. That is um, some, I started a couple of courses uh, a few months back and um, the rabbit course has some grasses in it where we also are using the negative burning to put in these grasses and brambles. And that is, it can be a bit challenging but um, if that's something you're interested in, want to do more of, and would like a little bit more instruction on, I invite you to go check that out. I'll put a link in the description box below if that's something you might want to check into. Okay, so there's a couple. I'm just going to turn this around and work on a little bit more here on this side. I find it easier to um, always be working with the tip up against where I want the hardest edge or the darkest area. That's why I turned the gourd. So I do turn the gourd often as I'm working. I try to do it not quite as much when I'm filming a video because I don't want people to get dizzy. <laughs> but it is something to keep in mind when you're working that the hottest part of your, um, of your pen tip is the very 
tip. That's where you're going to have the hardest edge. So you want to be working with that edge or that tip right against the hard edge. Of course, if you wanted a softer edge, you could work more with the heel of the pen instead of the tip. And if you're curious, the um, pyrography unit that I'm using is the Burn Master by Master Carver. It's the Eagle Wood Burner um, Transformer. And the pen I'm using is a razor tip um, bent angle shader. I think it's the large size. And I am not... Um, they don't work for those companies, and I'm not uh, telling you to go out and buy that specific one that I'm using, but I usually get people asking, what am I using? So I'm just telling you ahead of time, that's what I'm using. There's a lot of good companies out there on the market that would be recommended. I think I have a couple videos on that. If you check out my channel, you can find them there. And if this is one of your first videos, if you just found me today, I do have a few other videos on burning. If you want to check out my channel, if you like this, you could go and subscribe. And if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up. No, everybody tells you that, but it does help with ranking, um, and it lets me know that people like what I'm putting out there and encourages me to, to do more. If there's something you'd like to see me work on in the future, just leave a comment. I'd like to hear from you. We'll try to tilt that pen, get in that tiny space there. Just gonna turn this again, work on this space. We'll put a bubble in there. Okay, so you can see these tentacles starting to come out. Now, these that I have in front here, I'm gonna turn my burner down just a little bit. I'm still gonna do the same technique, but I wanna turn it down and have this a little bit of a lighter shade. And they'll still come forward, generally speaking, uh, the lighter shades will come forward, especially where you have the highest contrast. 
So that's something that you can play around with a bit in your burning is your lights and your darks and your contrasts and your edges. All of these things make a big difference. And maybe we can do some more videos on that in the future on edges and placement. Okay, I think I'm going to turn on the time lapse and you can watch me work a little bit faster pace and I'll get some more of this filled in and um, and yeah, so here we go. So I have all the tentacles burnt around and I'm just going to use this. This is just a little piece of a magic eraser to get some of the pencil lines off so you can get a better look at that. Now this is not finished. What I'll be doing next is just going into these, um, these edges and cleaning them up, tightening them up a little bit, making sure that they're all nice and even, and just do a little bit of shading on either side of where the tentacles overlap, like I did here. If you see, I have a little bit of shading on where it overlaps. And then, of course, putting in the details on the jellyfish itself. So I'm just going to work on the jellyfish a little bit now as I close out this video. I changed to an Optima bench shader. I just like the, this one's a little bit smoother because it has a little bit of a smaller nib on the end. This, um, this gourd is a little bit lumpy, so uh, this just gives me a little bit of a smoother burn on the jellyfish itself, whereas on the water, areas it didn't matter to me if it was more textured I kind of I wanted that textured look 
So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new or something that you can apply to your own burning or even other artwork, um, thinking about the negative spaces around objects. Um, if you like this video and you would like to see more, then just head on over to my channel and you can click the subscribe button. I don't put out a lot of vid uh, videos very frequently, but when I do, you don't want to miss them. So uh, go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell so that you don't miss any new videos when I make them available. So uh, again, thank you for watching and um, I will see you soon.